I've just started my fifth career, and these are, these are not fly-by-night careers. These are 10-year uh, careers. And so um, I don't count the 23 years that I spent as a student. That's not a career. But I started out as a, um, after that, as a scientist engineer, and that's when I invented, uh, led the team that invented Ethernet. And then after that, I went off and uh, started my own company, 3Com Corporation, and that took about 13 years. Uh, then after that, I spent uh, another 10 years or so as a publisher and a journalist, a trade journalist for InfraWorld magazine. And then after that, I was a venture capitalist with Polaris Venture Partners for 10 years out of Waltham, Massachusetts. And now for a year, I've been a professor of innovation at the University of Texas at Austin. I've been answering Ethernet questions for 30 or 40 years, and, um, and a lot of people think that there was a Eureka moment, or that there should be a Eureka moment. Their conception of invention is there's a Eureka. Ethernet was built on years of prior work um, in developing the early phases of the internet, the packet switch network. And then we needed a LAN version of the internet, so it was a small step building on what had gone before. And now there's been 38 years or more of uh, building on that invention. I'm an engineer and an entrepreneur, and what I'm good at is communicating about those things. That's where I tend to add value as a I mean, I can write computer programs and build hardware, and I've done a lot of that, and I can start companies. I've started one big one. But the way I do that, I mean, my, you asked what I was good at. It's communicating about all that. And, and would you like to know my uh, secret? The secret of communicating is listening. I'm a really good listener. Say something interesting. <laughs> Metcalf's Law began uh, its life as a sales tool. We, um, uh, we sold a bunch of three-node ethernets to early customers, and after about a year, they all came back and said, this three-node network did exactly what you said it would do, but it wasn't very useful. And I was head of sales and marketing at the time, so I needed an answer to that question. So I made this slide up that showed that the cost of a network goes up linearly with, you know, as you buy my ethernet cards, but the value goes up as the square, which means it starts small and then it gets big. And there's, a, there's this point at which the square passes the linear, and that's the critical mass point. So if your network is too small, it doesn't really do enough for you. But if you can get critical mass, then suddenly it takes off. So I made up this slide, gave it to my 12-person sales force, and we went out to our customers who had bought trials, and we presented them with this concept uh, and they, so they bought more. Our recommendation was they needed 30 node networks in order, they only had three node networks, they had to go to 30 before they stood a chance of experiencing this critical mass. So we sold a bunch of 30 node networks and the good thing happened, they proved to be useful and next thing we knew we were selling millions of them and it was very exciting. But then many years later, in 1995, a man named George Gilder um, saw this slide and he's the guy, one of the guys who uh, made Moore's Law famous. So he decided to make Metcalf's Law famous. So he decided that slide that we, that sales tool, uh, should be called Metcalf's Law. And who am I to argue with him? And uh, so I've been defending the law for 20, 30 years now. In my experience, ideas are a dime a dozen. So just having an idea is great, it's fun to have ideas, and, and you need to have ideas, and it's great, but don't, uh, don't make the mistake of thinking that having an idea is really the cat's pajamas, because they're a dime a dozen. So one of the uh, indicia of a good idea is, do you know anything about the field in which you have this idea? You know, uh, do you have some expertise that it's built on, or some experience that it's built on? Uh, otherwise, you just have an idea, and so they're a dime a dozen. The name that comes to mind on my heroes list, of course, is uh, Steve Jobs. He helped me start my company, 3Com. He tried to recruit me to Apple. I stupidly <laughs> resisted. And then when he got that I was starting a company, he helped me start the company. And he was sort of a friend uh, for a big hunk of the 80s. So he's, uh, he's on my eternal heroes list. And I defend him every time someone attacks him. Uh, 
But he was a difficult person. I'm very humble. I think people should be very humble about how good they are at starting companies, because I don't think anyone's very good at it. And we're struggling to know more about it, and we're struggling to share our lessons, but we don't know shit about starting companies. And it's one of the reasons I like to say startup, the middle three letters of the word startup, R-A-R-T. It is an art that we're practicing here.